I'm not singing. It's all about how you're singing. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Nativity. My name is Sean Barrett. I'm the pastor here. Good to have you all here with us this morning. Uh, First, if you are a visitor, if you would please take a few moments just to fill out one of these cards so we can be in touch. would appreciate that. And then also tomorrow night is our new member meet and greet. So if you are either joining or interested in in joining Nativity, I invite you to join us tomorrow night here for that you want to contact Michelle so she can get you set with that uh, contact her tomorrow about that uh, we're going to have dessert we'll have the staff there and then we'll also take a tour and you can learn more about who we are and what we do so hopefully get a, a good turnout for that tomorrow as well well I don't have any other announcements this morning so uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship with the music of the prelude I invite you to stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of all that is, wind and rain, land and sea, plants and animals, the power at work within us and this world. Amen. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin.
Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. A reading from Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see, all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun because someone, sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. The second reading from Colossians, the third chapter. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, for who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is adultery. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. 
I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We have a children come up for the children's word time today. I see him, but I don't see any movement. All right. Well, this week, we had a blast at the youth cabin retreat. Yes, Corinne? Oh, are you coming up? Okay. Come on up. We got one brave soul. Thank you, Corinne. She's back there giving me stage directions, so I know what's going on back here. (laughs) Come on up. It takes a lot of courage to come up here when you're flying solo, doesn't it? I like the shirt, too, the dinosaurs. You can have a seat if you like. So do you ever have, do you have any balls like this at home? Uh, Do you? Okay, like a kickball and just kind of this little foam one. Do you have, uh, like, do you ever, like, baseball or basketball? Do you have anything like that, too? Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot out there. And I brought these up because I was wondering if you had the option between these, which one would you choose? Um, I think it's safer. That one's because it's safer. That's a good. That's a good option. Yeah. You, if this hits something, it probably won't break it, right? This won't knock over a lamp where where this one might. What if you were going to play kickball? Which one would you choose? Um, okay. Yeah, because kind of a different purpose, right? And these are a lot of fun. We play, we used this for, in Foursquare this past week when we're in the youth cabin retreat. But they're a lot of fun. Uh, but we kind of get into trouble sometimes when sometimes you'll notice people will want, they don't want to choose between this one or this one. They'll just take them both, right? And then they just keep them and they don't want to share. And this morning, Jesus is telling us about the problems with being greedy because we get all wrapped up in ourselves instead of realizing that everything we have is a gift from God. And so he's trying to show us that we can then share freely. Because you think about what kind of, have you ever thought about what kind of things God has given you? Can you name some things that God gives us? Uh, family. Family, yeah, that's a big one, right? That's a gift from God. Uh, our lives, right? And Jesus comes for us, right, to give us eternal life. And so God has been really very generous with us. And as God's people, God says, you know what? You can be generous too. You can be free from trying to collect everything and be free to share with other people and to give like God has given to us. That's a pretty, pretty remarkable promise that God gives us. Well, let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for being generous for us, for giving us life and our families and everything that is. Help us to be generous to others as you have been to us. Amen. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming up today, too. Well, this past week, we had a great time at the cabin retreat. We were out near Gatlinburg in a three-story cabin, and it was just a blast. And the theme for the week was detours. I was instructed by those attending this retreat that I was never allowed to use that theme again. (laughs) 
because it seemed to inspire more and more detours as the week went on. We had four adult leaders and nine youth on this trip, and initially it was fun. We thought, well, you know, the weather changed. We're just going to change our plans. The theme is detours after all. Why not? That got old after a few days. But I thought we were finally in the clear because on the last day, our goal was to get out of the cabin. We were leaving by 10 a.m., and we got 13 people dressed, fed, packed, and loaded in the car 15 minutes ahead of time. That was pretty remarkable. But I should have known something was up because about a quarter mile away from the cabin, my tire pressure light came on in the car. I knew I'd have to pull over and put some more air in there. Then we were driving and there was a tree that had blown over. It was a lane in the road. One whole lane was blocked. We got around it in the other lane. Okay, we're back on the road. Stopped off at a building, put air in the tire. We're in good shape now. Then we came up on a single car accident, which was blocking another lane. And the man who was in the car was talking with a police officer and waved us through. So there we were, three things had happened, and we hadn't even gotten on the highway yet. <laughs> then we got on the highway, stopped off at the rest area, got back on, and our ETA was still 15 minutes ahead of when we had planned. Awesome. That's my, I had dreams of laying down, taking a nap in my own bed, <laughs> with my own pillows, my own blankets just enjoying some quiet afternoon at home. We got off of I-40, got onto I-26. <laughs> Have you seen this movie before? Is <laughs> and traffic came to a halt. We were just stuck. There was nowhere to go because we were between Brevard Road and Long Shoals. There's no exits, you've been there. And we were 7.3 miles away from being back here. And we were joking, we could get out and walk quicker than we could drive there. <laughs> but that joke became true. Because we were stuck in traffic for an hour and 45 minutes. Oh. Hour and 45, just stuck there, not moving. I would have loved to have another detour. <laughs> An exit. And while we were stopped there, one of the adults leaders said, I sure wish we had a detour about right now. <laughs> there was no one laughing that day. <laughs> we waited and waited, and we finally made it back. What a trip back home. Well, Jesus this morning is talking about the perils of greed and the beauty of a generous life. He's giving us a way off of this endless cycle of greed. He has a man come to him and says, Teacher, help me settle this dispute with my brother. And Jesus sees the question behind the question. And the real question is, uh, Jesus, I need you to tell my brother to give me my stuff. I want my stuff. And Jesus says, this is not what I'm here to do. Who made me judge or arbitrator over you? And he says, be on, the guard, be on guard against all kinds of greed. And I think the Greeks had the right idea about what greed is. Because that word for greed literally means have more, want more. Have more, want more. That's a great description of greed. You have more, and you want more. And you have more, and you want more. And you get stuck in this cycle of having more and wanting more, and having more and wanting more, and eventually it becomes a treadmill, and you will waste your entire life having more and wanting more. He then tells this parable about a rich farmer. His land produces abundantly. It is a bumper crop, and now he has a dilemma. What should he do with all his crop? Should he share some? Maybe give it away to people who are hungry? Oh, he's got a much better plan than that. Bigger barns! 
I'm going to hold it all, and then I'm going to kick back, relax, and let the good times roll. But God comes to him in a dream and says, You fool! You fool! Tonight, your life is being demanded of you, and all of this that you worked for, whose will it be? You don't get to control what happens to your stuff when you're dead. The life of greed becomes this endless cycle which we cannot escape. Have more, want more. The man in the parable was caught on this treadmill of having more and wanting more. And Jesus this morning shows us the way out of this cycle. Our last night at the youth retreat, I asked all of those who were there to share with me what, what stood out to you. What is something you learned, something that you appreciated, something you're going to take home with you after the trip we had together? And I did not attach their names to their answers, but I did share with them that I'd be sharing their answers with you all this morning. And I wrote them down. The worship services, the liturgy and songs. How often do you hear middle schoolers and high schoolers loving the liturgy and the songs? The Bible study conversations about detours in life and faith. The river time and time spent together. Everyone singing together. I felt included. The time we spent together as a group in Bible study. The time we all piled up together on one single couch. (laughs) That was a crowded couch. (laughs) Joking and laughing together. Hanging out and having a good time. Getting off topic in Bible studies and then coming back. I got closer to a lot of people. There is no other youth group I'd rather be in. I was medium excited to come, but I'm so glad I did because I had fun. And I got to connect with different people who I usually don't talk to. That trip was marvelous. And that trip was possible because of your generosity. Your generous gifts made that possible. We love God by loving our neighbors. And one of the ways we love our neighbors is through a life of generous giving. This trip is part of the fruit of the ways that Nativity has given. So many times I hear people say that youth are the future. And I completely disagree with that for one reason. If youth were the future, we would not be able to see them, right? I can't see the future. I don't think you can either. Youth are part of our church right now, and your generosity has helped them in this. Martin Luther said, God does not need your good works, but your neighbor does. We love God as we give generously, as we share with others, no matter if they're older or younger than us, if they're from the same nation, they speak the same language. We live a generous life and we impact others. We as Americans, we get real funny and uncomfortable when we talk about money. And this creates a real challenge for you as a congregation and for me as the preacher because Jesus doesn't give us that freedom. Jesus talks about money more than he talks about heaven. He talks about money more than he talks about hell. He talks about money more than he talks about heaven and hell combined. And in the Gospel of Luke that we just read from, one out of every seven verses is about money. So we're stuck talking about this. And why is this so important to Jesus? 
but because it's important to us. We human beings have a tendency of believing that if we hoard enough stuff, if we can collect enough shiny things, then our lives will be safe and secure, and we will finally be free from worries. But it's just not true. According to Jesus, the opposite is true. When we live a life of greed, we become slaves, servants of an endless drive to have more, want more. Have more, want more. Jesus is showing us the way out of the cycle this morning. The way out of the cycle is through generosity. It is through giving. And I think about that afternoon spent in a traffic jam. Oh, how I would have loved to have a detour or an exit ramp. And there was none there. That sense of being trapped in one place. We have an exit out of this endless cycle of greed. The exit is sharing. The exit is generosity. God did not even hold back God's own son for us. We will never outgive God. And our giving impacts the lives of others. It is a way in which we make a difference in this world. It is a way in which we are the salt and light that Jesus calls us to be. We can dare to be generous because we know how generous God has been to us. Amen.
We are gathered by God into one church through Christ. Together with sisters and brothers throughout the world, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We of the Council of the Lutheran Church of the Nativity have appointed Vicki Hahn to serve the position of Nativity Preschool and Kindergarten Director. Congregation may be seated. I prayed a lot about what I was going to say today. Um, I'm excited to be back home. being guided by the Lord and, and serving the Lord in this position and look forward to getting to know all of the families that are in this program. I am thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. We are excited to bring Vicki on board. And I am, um, you know, I end up getting some of the credit for what's going on here, but honestly, I walked into some marvelous leadership on the council and a fantastic staff. I mean, I really could not do what I do without the support of Michelle and Ryan, Jen and Jean, Tony, just fantastic. And so we're excited to have you come on board with us as well, Vicki. Our Lord Jesus, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. You come among us as one invited to render a particular service a gift from God to inspire us to love and good works. Vicki, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that comes from God? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you carry out this ministry in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church and in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Trusting in God's care, will you seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand. People of God, will you receive Vicki Hahn into this ministry as one sent to serve in the church of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for her, help and honor her for her work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will. Vicki Hahn, I now declare you installed as Nativity Preschool and Kindergarten Director. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be a faithful servant of Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called workers to varied tasks in the world and in your church. So you have called Vicki Hahn to this ministry. Grant her joy and a spirit of bold trust that her work may stir up each of us to a life of fruitful service. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, I present to you Vicki Hahn, your MPK director. Let us welcome her in the name of Christ. Welcome. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Bless the ministry of Lutheridge and all outdoor ministries. Merciful God. You are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of, all, of the nations. We pray for peace in Ukraine. We also pray for all refugees, especially the Azizi family, as they make a home in our parsonage. Merciful God. our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide and work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry at Lutheran Church of the Nativity. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress. We pray especially for Nativity disciples who are in need of healing. Wanda Bond, Bob Burkhart, Wanda Burkhart, Jim Dacey, Grant Hammock, Mandy Horetsky, Mackenzie Jordan, Barbara Knapp, Faye Cohn, Peggy Mann, Nancy Rehan, Steve Reidenhauer, Carrie Schuing, Bill Scrantz, Chris Scrantz, and Julie Smith. Nativity Disciples and Care Facilities, Jack Haynes, Donna Kroff, Brenta Poole, Estelle Sheldon, and Elsie White. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God. of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace with one another.
God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the celebration and share the meal of the baptized. All are welcomed. Please be seated.
I invite you to stand for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen.